very quickly going to show a few slides uh, to wrap this up, and then I will ask John Bartlett and Ken Mayer to make a few closing comments, and then we will be officially adjourned. So uh, I think we had some great sessions. These are some photos of the opening plenary. We had our secretary, Sebelius, attending. Uh, we had Henry Waxman and Tony Fauci here uh, yesterday at noon. And then, of course, yesterday evening, we had this amazing presentation by the Medea Project. So we had 34, 347 registered attendees, including 73 authors of accepted abstracts, 40 invited speakers and panelists, and 31 moderators. But uh, we actually had a total of 165 abstracts being presented as posters. We had scholarships for 20 participants, and we had four special scholarships to minority clinical providers courtesy of HIVMA, and we thank the HIVMA for following a tradition established two years ago to provide these scholarships. Uh, we had 32 states represented, and we had six countries represented. So I think we're expanding a little bit geographically. I do want to, again, thank all of our collaborating partners who helped us to plan this and you know, communicate it through your own networks in terms of bringing people to the summit, and of course the financial sponsors without whom this couldn't have been done. The organizing committee, once more, the scientific advisory committee, and I really uh, want to also talk, uh, thank the category co-chairs, and then of course the forum staff. Um, you've seen me up on stage a lot, but Ben and Nina really took the charge. If you could both just stand up and get applause. The rest of the forum staff, please stand up as well. I know you're interspersed, Nina, Kate. And then uh, Margie and Dave Poole and their staff have just been incredible. And, and making this happen. There's no other organization that I know that is so effective in just taking care of every single last minute high maintenance item that comes up. They deserve a huge round of applause. Okay, John and Ken, it's up to you now. Okay, so I, um, I don't have slides. Uh, what I thought I would do is, um, what I'd like to do in a few minutes is to uh, give what I think are kind of the Academy Awards uh, for what we've talked about, uh, but five in order to save space. Uh, so the Academy Award for the hallway comment or conversation uh, goes, which, which is a wonderful part of this meeting. <laughs> it's all people you talk to at coffee. <laughs> so, yeah, social intercourse. Uh, okay, so it goes to, the award goes to Barbara McGovern, um, who said, you know, doctors should work at the top of their license, um, and we ought to have people trained as clerks to fill out who's had hepatitis B, who needs a mammogram, uh, who needs lipids, because it's so rote. Uh, and we really want to be practitioners of the art of medicine and not be the clerks that fill out blanks, which is the way I see medicine going. So anyway, I thought it was a good idea. Uh, the award for evilness uh, goes to the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force. <laughs> Uh, the award for controversy is something we really didn't discuss very much, uh, but I may have missed it because I wasn't with Rochelle's uh, session. But that's what's going what's to be the impact of generic drugs on what we do. And, you know, what she showed was we can save a billion dollars uh, in the very near future on the basis of taking three pills instead of one. Every time I bring this up, it creates a storm. Uh, but I think it's something we have to deal with. Um, and the final, or no, the second to final one is the challenge. And I thought the challenge uh, was in healthcare reform and the statement by Steve Boswell, which just stuck to me like glue. He goes to the meeting and there are seven representatives of subspecialties to him. 
and anything he wants to do to change the way the flow of money goes is trumped before it gets started. And I think that tells us something about healthcare economics in the future, and it's not going to save money unless we figure out a different way to do it. Um, and finally is the Opportunity Award. And the Opportunity Award was really simple. Hepatitis C is like, to me, like polio was in the 1950s. I mean, all of a sudden, suddenly, a really bad disease has a definitive answer that's coming very soon. Uh, and I remember when, many of you don't, when polio uh, vaccine was announced, the uh, Guardian uh, newspaper said, nothing short of the defeat of the Russian Empire would trump what has happened in Jonas Salk's study. Um, and so in two years, we'll probably be able to essentially treat and prevent hepatitis C. And, you know, we all want to go there with HIV, but it's going to take decades. Uh, this is a fast fix. Uh, it's unbelievable in terms of opportunity. So that's my comments. So this is the fourth one of these that we've had. And when Carol Brogart first um, approached John and me, listen, uh, <laughs> but when Carol Brogart first approached John and me, um, more than six years ago um, about having a meeting. Um, I think my initial response was, oh, I mean, so many meetings, you know, um, there's IDSA, there's a CDC prevention conference, there's the uh, retrovirus conference, there's APHA, you know, a lot of us go, spend a lot of time going to meetings. And the question was, what's the value added of having yet another uh, meeting? Uh, but I think particularly under the aegis of the forum that has this unique ability to bring different stakeholders together. I think we're all, so many people sticking around throughout the course of these last uh, um, two days, uh, you know, I think suggests that there is merit to having this meeting um, and it has some unique uh, importance. I mean, we're living at a really interesting time. Um, you know, the data uh, that Mike uh, Cohn presented uh, from 052 that we should be thinking aspirationally um, as well as um, use evidence base to try to move things forward. And we can learn from HIV uh, to think about how we can address hepatitis C. I mean, it's, it's, it's very inspiring to have John think that we can think of hepatitis C like polio, but I think many of the other comments in the room, especially with what we don't know what's going to happen over the next few weeks to months about uh, uh, funding for public health over the next uh, uh, months to years, is a challenge because I'm, I'm also concerned, as many people in the room, um, articulate that we have a tsunami of people who may progress with their liver disease because they don't know about their infection. So certainly the, the one thing we all can concretely do immediately is to be um, addressing the U.S. Public Health Service misplaced uh, guidance giving a, a category uh, C recommendation around baby boomer screening. It seemed like um, we're fighting the last war. I mean, it's, it seems like they came around uh, category A now for HIV and even more so for an infection that's uh, completely uh, um, treatable within the next few years to not have people aware of their infection and to start gearing up to address that. Um, this is a very unique meeting. It's brought together frontline implementers, clinicians, public health um, uh, leaders, both nationally and at local uh, jurisdictions, uh, behavioral scientists, uh, community members, and um, colleagues from industry. Um, the one other thing I would ask people who have generously supported this meeting uh, prior, uh, in prior years in this current meeting, it, now's the time to start thinking about support for the uh, 2014 meeting. The forum staff work brilliantly and very hard, but it's also kind of tense uh, uh, to put together the best meeting possible when one is having to uh, worry about uh, support back then. So I hope that the meeting has achieved value. I, one of the things that John and Veronica and I, and uh, I hope other people in the room are simulated to do, is to try to write down some of what we've learned and try to disseminate it, because I think there's many people outside of the room who would also benefit from some of the conversations we've had over the last couple of days. So that turned the podium back to Veronica, and thanks everybody for being here. Yeah, thank you. 
So let me just mention uh, two things. One is that you will get an email with an online survey uh, that we really ask all of you to fill out and send back. And please be generous with your comments. And I mean generous in terms of writing comments. And hopefully they will be nicely generous comments as well. Because that is then really um, is our funding package for the next cycle. We take your comments about you, the worth of this meeting to you and your work and use that as a rationale for getting funding for the next summit. So if you want to see another summit, we need to have funding in place and we need you to support us in doing that. So that's number one. Number two, uh, the plenary sessions were web captured. It will take a little while because we have to go through the Berkeley process, but the plenary sessions will be available as, as web captured um, presentations on our website within about a week or so, so just give us a chance. And then all the slide presentations from the various sessions will also be available on our website. So go back to our website, find the information you need. If you have any other questions or whatever, don't hesitate to email me or anyone in the forum staff. So thank you very much, everyone, again, and uh, hope that you have a good rest of the day and look forward to a weekend that's coming up in about two days. Thank you. Thank you.